Welcome to the Pollinator Project. Christina Lefevre and her colleague Kyle Pauling are heading up the Pollinator Project Rogue Valley. This organization's goal is to encourage and facilitate plantings that support pollinators including bees, butterflies, and other pollinators who visit plants for their pollen and nectar. At their Phoenix office, they've planted a street side garden to demonstrate the types of plants that our pollinators need. Here's Christina to tell you about it. Hi, this is Christina Lefevre. She is our PPRV president, and we are currently outside of our office looking at our native plant garden. We planted most of this in 2019, and it's now blooming quite wonderfully, and we'd like to take you on a tour to look through all of it. And hi, good morning. This is Kyle Poling, our Pollinator Project Rogue Valley board member who is a native plant enthusiast and expert and has been helping and guiding this garden to creation that you are seeing here today about two years later. So just a little bit of background about this garden. When we moved in here into this office in February of 2019, this landscape was totally 100% non-native. We had bushes, the Euronymus, um, pretty much that's what you would see. It was not very attractive. And we submitted a grant to the Ashland Food Co-op for money to transform this garden, this frontscape, into a native plant garden. It's not completely straight native now. Um, we should probably mention that the early blooming heather, which is pretty much gone now, it was so important for some of the bumblebees when they first came out. But what we're trying to do is show people here that you can have an almost straight species native plant garden, drought tolerant, blooms beautifully from spring until fall. On this tour we're going to do today, we're going to be looking at individual plants that we have in the garden. And you'll see that each one has a little wooden number next to it. And if you come by the office, we have these wonderful little guides printed out where you can do a self-guided tour and learn about each one of these plants in detail. They've got wonderful information about their growing requirements, what pollinators they support, and we would really urge you to come give us a visit. So this plant here is Grindelia nana, also known as the Idaho gumweed. And although it's not blooming yet, this is another plant that we'd really like to highlight because it's such a wonderful late season pollen and nectar source. This, in my experience, is one of the very last plants to continue blooming. Even after a light frost, it'll still keep pushing some blooms. And this one, unlike the tarweed, is a perennial. So it'll come back year after year, and it has some very vigorous seedlings, so you'll get volunteers as well. The other things to mention is the flower buds, as you can see, there are so many. As after it flowers, it will have beautiful little seeds cupped into the flower head. Um, and those are just extremely important for the birds. So we left almost all the seeds heads intact, except for what we collected to grow out, which we were very successful with. And the birds ate them. Um, and you also end up with lots of baby Grindelia nana down there, so we have plenty to share, give away, um, and or assume that they're weeds. This is one of my favorite plants. This plant here is called the silver bush lupin or Lupinus albifrons, and it is one of our most beautiful lupins in my opinion. It has an interesting ability to hold its foliage through the winter, unlike many other species and is an excellent early season nectar and pollen source for a lot of our bumblebees. In fact, a bumblebee is one of the best pollinators for this flower because it has the size and weight that it can actually land on the keel, the bottom part of that flower, and open it up and then access the pollen and the nectar. And this is Oregon Sunshine, one of the most beautiful, stupendous plants in the garden right now. Um, I would highly recommend this. This is a second year planting. You can see how large it's gotten from a small plant that we put in in 2019. It's so interesting to watch this plant continue to bloom 
through the past couple of weeks. It started on one edge of the plant, and then you can see even here how many more blooms. So this is a long blooming plant through the summer, spring and summer. It's a fabulous pollinator plant, and again, a great plant for the birds because the seed heads, we leave them, and again, the seed pods will be completely empty by the time winter is over. Great ground cover, dry, hardly watered here, and it's up against the sidewalk on a street, west-facing um, sun all day long, and it can't be beat. This is going to be a stunning plant even more than it already is. You can see that the flowers are just about to pop. Last year we had four beautiful blooms. You can find that on the video on our website about this exact same plant. And you can see this year it has, what, 10 to 12 flower stalks that are going to be absolutely gorgeous. It's amazing how, how the penstemon colors are just so iridescent and um, changing as you look at the flower itself. This is really a great plant for pollinators as well. Um, the bumblebees love it. The small native bees can get in there and access the pollen and the nectar. Uh, hummingbirds, I'm presuming, will also go for it. This is a perennial. It always stays green, but of course the flower stalks are not there. Um, and so it will die down. Um, this will die down. We cut the flower stalks, we harvested seed, and we're actually growing some of these as well. So this plant here is called the sulfur flowered buckwheat. And this plant is notable for being very drought tolerant and also a great host plant for a lot of butterfly species. So that means that the butterflies will come and lay their eggs on this plant and the caterpillars specialize on this species and genus and they can only eat this plant. Unlike the, the monarch butterflies, a lot of people don't know that there are many other species of butterflies and moths that are also equally as specific. They need a particular plant to raise their young. And species in the Areogonum, or buckwheat family, are really good for that. They're great host plants. And then I just wanted to mention that behind Kyle is another Penstemon humulus that is just about to bloom. So you can see the small flower heads that are there. That is just going to be amazing. It did not bloom last year. Wanted to just point out our one native grass. This is a bunch grass. This is Romer's fescue. How do you say it in Latin? Festuca romerii. One of those. So we want to have more of these native bunch grasses because it doesn't have flowers, so you would think, oh, I don't need grasses. But actually, native grasses are just excellent host plants for many of our native butterflies, moths. It provides overwintering cover for beneficial insects, and also bumblebee nests will go under there. Mm -hmm. And they're also notable for having extensive root systems. Unlike a lot of our non-native grasses, bunch grasses in particular really throw down deep roots that hold the soil and can access moisture where other species can't. So this is a late addition to this garden. We do have narrowleaf milkweed planted at the other end. And this was donated to us. This is a beautiful showy milkweed. It was, came to us like this. And as you look closer, you can see that the flower heads are there. It's getting ready to bud out. We don't have a number yet for this one in the book, but Kyle's going to tell you why this is such an important plant for our garden. Milkweeds in particular are really important for our monarch butterflies. Milkweeds or Asclepias species are the monarch butterfly's only host plant and the monarchs are in severe decline right now. In the past 50 years, we've lost 99% of our Western monarch butterflies, and they are severely, severely endangered right now. And milkweed being their only host plant is really important to put in your garden. And they're not only good for the monarchs, they're also great for lots of other pollinator species. They produce quite a bit of nectar that is very rich in nutrients in the summer, and they'll be visited by bees, wasps, butterflies. Everything loves Asclepius blooms. 
And I just wanted to point out these beautiful poppies. It looks like they were planted, right? No, they weren't. They came in either from the soil or from the wind. And it's just such a beautiful addition. Poppies are an important pollen source. Poppies don't have nectar, so you won't see a butterfly on it. But they're just extremely important, especially for the queen bumblebees when she's coming out in the spring and she's looking for her uh, food for her babies that she's going to take back. And also, especially in the fall, when she's getting ready to hibernate into the uh, in her underground nest until she can come out the next spring and begin the cycle again. So we just really love to see the poppies up and down 99 between Phoenix and Talent and please grow more poppies. Thank you so much to Pete Gonzalez for working on this. It's such a comprehensive um, summary of the plants that we have. Um, there's information in the back about the contributors to, who create this garden. So do stop by and take a self-guided tour at your leisure. Thank you so much for watching this video with us and stopping by the PPRV garden. We've highlighted individual plants, but we have yet to do a full walkthrough. So in this last minute here, we're just going to kind of peruse the garden and let you see what's blooming now. Please come visit us throughout the year. We have a garden here that blooms early spring to late summer and into the fall. So the garden does evolve and change. Please stop by. Thank you to the Jackson County Master Gardeners for giving us this opportunity to showcase this native plant garden. We do hope it's educational and informative for people. Um, we appreciate the, the coverage.